I bet you question how much of a difference these things really make when it comes to reducing your carbon footprint. But what can you do now to actually help? Here's an example you might not have thought of to sink your teeth into. Hungry? Well, whatever you eat has a carbon footprint. You probably heard beef has one of the biggest, though most of us don't have one ingredient meals. Take, for instance, a lunchtime staple, the sandwich. Of course, a UK study actually looked at the carbon footprints of sandwiches, and Adisa Adzapadzic is one of the authors. Adisa, what are the sandwiches we should avoid? Well, the sandwich that you should avoid is uh, ham and cheese and also a breakfast sandwich, which contains uh, bacon, sausage, and an egg. Okay, so what if I suddenly went vegan and I took the ham out, I took the cheese out, and then I'm just left with the tomato and the lettuce. Is that okay? Uh, apart from the taste, <laughs> uh, that should be okay, but it depends how tomato is grown. So in the UK, for example, most of the tomato is grown in greenhouses, and that requires energy, which means that the carbon footprint of tomato is really high. Oh. So just to give you an example, one kilogram of tomatoes would have 10 kilograms of CO2 equivalent emitted into the atmosphere. So that is 10 times more than its own weight. But if we imported tomato from Spain, where it's grown in open fields, then the carbon footprint is lower, even when you account for the transportation. So what can Canadians take away from your study? Uh, we have a choice in terms of the type of uh, food that we eat. So generally less meat. And if you make a sandwich at home, you will normally halve the carbon footprint of your sandwich. If you do buy, packaging is a consideration, and you never guess what the best one is when it comes to carbon footprints. It's styrofoam, of all things. It's lightweight, easy to produce, easy to transport. A University of Manchester study says it has one and a half times less carbon footprint than aluminum, three times less than clear plastic. If you move into something like paper, well, that's okay so long as you actually compost it. Now, these are numbers specific to the United Kingdom, but reusable is always good so long as you reuse it. Don't lose your container. Uh, you know, you got to use something like this 18 times to equal the carbon footprint of that styrofoam. If you move on to glass, hey, that's great, but you got to reuse it even more because of how carbon intensive it is to produce something like this. There's one really big way to reduce our own carbon footprint and maybe make a bit of money at the same time, talking about your investments. So one study from CoPower shows the average Canadian portfolio is connected to more carbon emissions than anything else we do in our daily lives, even driving. And so a $10,000 investment, for instance, here at the Toronto Stock Exchange, could be connected to 800 kilograms of CO2 each year. That's the equivalent of driving 3,000 kilometers in a car, tumble drying 332 loads of laundry, or eating 264 quarter pounder hamburgers. Okay, whoa, 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 let's hit the rewind button. How is it that investing has a carbon footprint? Man with the answers today is Tim Nash, and you are an investment coach, and you're also the founder of Good Investing. So explain this to me. How is it the money that I invest has a carbon footprint? Right, well, you invest that money in companies, and those companies emit carbon emissions. So just like you share in their profits, you also share in their carbon footprint. Okay, I get how you say you're partially responsible, they're emitting, you have a share in that. And as Canadians, we invest trillions of dollars a year. But what about the small guy, the normal guy? Uh, when it comes to regular investors like you and I, Right? The first step you're going to want to take is to speak to your financial advisor, whoever you're working with, and ask some tough questions. See whether they have socially responsible investments available. But am I giving up returns by going with one of those? Not at all. All the studies have shown that you can do just as well, if not a little bit better, by investing in companies that are reducing their carbon emissions and by getting fossil fuels out of your portfolio, what we call divestment. We've started to see the smart money move in this direction. 
Canadian Pension Plan, Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, they're all moving in this direction. What I'm worried about is that if you own the companies that have those high carbon emissions, they're not going to be as profitable in the future, and regular investors might end up suffering uh, as the broader economy moves in this direction. Look where the puck is going, not where it is. That's it. So those are just a few things that you can do to reduce your own carbon footprint. They're not necessarily the biggest ones out there, but even the small ones taken collectively by all of us can really make a difference. David Common, CBC News, Toronto.